Apple's Scary Fast October Mac event had a bunch of new twists compared to a typical streamed presentation, including a new opening line. Good evening and welcome to Apple Park. Apple's first nighttime product reveal delivered new MacBook Pros and a new iMac, all updated with Apple's new M3 processors. And since it was held just hours before Halloween, there was a little bit of spooky humor mixed in. But that's not what stuck out the most to me. Several times, we heard Apple calling out the competition. Apple encouraged users to upgrade their old Macs with Intel chips, and it made the case for new Apple Silicon because they're the most advanced chips ever created for a personal computer. As we see the new Mac machines roll out, there's one more thing to watch. The competition between Apple and other chip makers is heating up right now with personal computers. The Mac versus PC debates will be creeping back into the conversation, and it's gonna get interesting in the months ahead. I'm Bridget Carey, and this is One More Thing. Earlier this week, I got to go hands-on with the new Macs at an event in New York City. There was a bit of a Halloween and candy theme going on. Having candy-colored iMacs, of course, fit in well with that theme. But let's first do a real quick recap of the news. There are three flavors of M3 chips. There's the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max. These are in the new MacBook Pros, which come in 14 and 16 inches in size. And if you are in the market for a new MacBook Pro, you'll have to weigh out a few more variables than you did before. The laptops start at $1,599 because of all the different options, but also there's a new color that is getting attention, space black. And that color is only in the more pricey higher end models. Apple created that color in such a way to be more fingerprint resistant. And with how everyone at the event was grabbing at the laptops, these machines were not full of fingerprints on the demo tables. Fingerprint smudges were a bit of a complaint for some folks with the midnight blue color in the 15 inch MacBook Air. But that's not the case here. The high end MacBook Pro with M3 Max is offered in a number of variations. But if you go all out, it goes up to 128 gigs of memory, and that takes you up to $7,199. The laptops themselves don't look much different at all. The improvements all come from the chips, and the M3 gets the battery life boosted up to 22 hours in the 14-inch model. With M3, Apple is also able to give the screen more power to raise the standard peak brightness levels, so it's brighter than the last MacBook Pro. Then there's also the iMacs. They look the same as the ones that came out before in 2021, which had the M1 chips, except now Apple is using M3. And Apple says that that makes the iMac twice as fast, but the price remains the same at $12.99. Apple had some gaming demos set up with both Mac MacBook Pros and iMacs showcasing how the M3 was designed to take gaming and graphics performance to the next level with how it can instantly render lighting and shadows and reflections to be more realistic as the player interacts with the environment. And this right here for me was a headline. Apple wants serious PC gamers to think of Apple, not the PC, for their next computer upgrade. But it goes beyond just converting Windows users. Apple wants to persuade people with its older Mac Intel machines to make the leap to M3. In fact, Apple twice mentioned Intel machines and spent time talking about how much better the MacBook Pros are now if you still have an Intel machine. It's up to a massive 11 times faster than the fastest Intel base model. It's been said that people tend to upgrade their computers after three years. I mean, I personally go a little bit longer than that, but Apple is targeting this audience the most to get a boost in sales right now. So even if you're feeling crabby that you got the MacBook Pro M2 that was out in February, well, it's not about the M2 users. Also, the iMac hasn't been updated in about three years. So this is the time to get people excited about upgrading the iMac as we approach the holidays. There's another thing hovering over the industry right now, and that's the increased competition coming from chip manufacturers like Qualcomm and Intel. Apple's new Macs are landing Tuesday, but Qualcomm just announced the Snapdragon X Elite chip as it moves more into the PC market. And generative AI is also being built into Qualcomm's most powerful chips. Qualcomm partnered with a bunch of PC makers, and it is expected that we're gonna be able to buy computers with these chips in the middle of next year. Qualcomm Qualcomm held an event just a week ago saying that its chips outperformed Apple's M2 chip. 
but Apple pretty much squashed that with the M3 announcement. We also got Intel now touting its Meteor Lake processor, which should be in laptops shipping in December, and that is said to be the brains of a new generation of what it calls AI PCs. In short, this is going to be a spicy few months ahead for benchmark tests to compare all these new processors coming out and how they perform against each other. Okay, so turns out it wasn't that spooky of an event in the end. Probably the scariest thing is that we didn't hear about any new USB-C accessories. Apple's still using the lightning ports for those magic keyboard and mice. And even though it was a short event, we did get a one more thing. Although it was never said by Tim Cook. Instead, the one more thing was at the very end, with just a few words of text on the bottom of the screen, shot on iPhone. Apple posted online some behind the scenes video of how the whole event was shot with an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And they also used the Blackmagic camera app with other accessories like cages and rigs and something called Tentacle Sync, which made sure all the devices are synced up with time codes on the set. Now, I didn't need all those accessories and I shot my entire hands-on preview by myself with my hands with an iPhone 15 Pro Max if you want to check out that video on the channel. But you don't see me making a big deal out of it. Just saying. Let me know what you think of the new Max in the comments. And in the meantime, there are some new Apple features that I've been testing out. I'll go more into that soon, like how the Apple Watch got its double tap feature rolled out to everyone. And I have been using the new iOS 17 journal app in beta. So stay tuned. We're gonna have plenty to talk about in the coming episodes. Thanks for watching.